Hi, this is Rich Berliner, and I'm coming to you from the Real Comp Show in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm here today with Jason Saplita from Rand Plan. Jason, great to have you with us. Appreciate it, Rich. Thank you very much. So I wanted to talk to you about the really great article you have in the new magazine, the new edition that just came out on Tuesday. Um, I thought you guys wrote a really great article about what you're doing, and I'd like you to talk a little bit about that to our audience today. Would you mind just kind of expanding on where you were and what you wrote about in the, uh, the article? Sure, sure, Rich. I appreciate that. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, we, we find out for us what the article was, we, we always talk about this edge, the network edge. And we've tried to find out who is that network edge. Everybody's asking that question. Well, that's why we're here today is because the network edge is actually the venue owners, the building owners, people who have are right there where the, uh, where the carrier's customers are in relationship to where they normally work and play and do other things. So actually, if you really want to look at it, the building or structures or venues are actually the edge of the network. And that's what we wrote about. We wanted to specifically focus in on what are the opportunities for building owners with their tenants and other uh, uh, ways of making money or saving money in a sense in regards to them being so important to the carriers when it's related to their network and of course the tenants. Gotcha. So as we put it so succinctly on the cover, property owners, you are the edge. Exactly. So I thought that was really great. I don't, re don't remember which one of us came up with that. I'm telling you, Rich, I'll tell you what, you are a creative man, trust me, there's no doubt about it. I'm sure there's a conversation between us for sure. Thank, thank you for saying that. So tell me how Rand Plan developed and what, how, where all this came from, because it seems like you've got a really interesting technology. Yeah, we, we really do. And so basically Rand Plan is a software that allows for engineers to design both indoor and outdoor networks collectively. Now, in the world of our uh, of the of the RF engineer and designing for networks, that's very very unique. In fact, we're the only organization that can do that. In fact, we're the only organization right now that can actually design for 5G, both indoor and outdoor collectively. So, I want you to imagine the fact that you have you have the surrounding buildings. A building owner has their own structure or their own venue, and they have buildings around that. Some of those buildings around that have to be taken in consideration as it relates to designing, because if you think about a macro site that's actually uh, serving your building or the building owner's uh, building and their tenants, if another building is adjacent to it's affecting that, that signal or that, 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 that network hitting their building, they need to know about it, right? So basically what you have, so you have to take in consideration the interference uh, that's coming from adjacent buildings around that building owner's product. Interesting, that seems like it would be a must because the signal's coming in right now through my window, so that would be a must for these people to know to, to do this design. Oh, exactly, and, and for, so think about how many years have gone by so far. You have what they call macro design engineers and you have in-building uh, engineers. Imagine them not really talking to each other. You know what divided them, Rich? Was the wall. That wall on that building is a dividing factor in when it comes to RF coverage and understanding coverage and interference. So now that you have small cells and now you have these your condensed and densified networks, especially for smart cities, what you're having now is these, these cell sites are getting smaller and smaller and closer and closer to the building. So now you have cell sites on lampposts, basically, and that interferes in a different way than a macro site does. So now you're thinking about how that it penetrates into a building, and you have to understand that. Now think about that when you now are trying to solve or trying to get coverage for your, uh, think of a building owner for a second. He's trying to figure out how, what kind of coverage he's going to get for his type of tenant. It might be a millennial. Think about a millennial for a second. This guy is actually on their, or he or she's on the phone all the time looking at it, and they're, they're a different type of client for that building owner than maybe someone who's looking just to have a smart building that's just monitoring itself. It's a low latency type of network. So are you taking into consideration e-glass on my building? Do you know whether I've got an e-glass building or I'm I have other barriers to that signal coming in when you do your designs? Oh, of course, of course. Building material is actually the number one thing, and it's probably our number one secret to our application. So you take in considering the building types, bricks, e-glass, all the different types, and that's had a different type of penetration level that's coming in or out of the building. Remember, you also have in-building networks that can interfere with outdoor as well, too. So that is the main one. So the two main, really our secret sauce, is the accuracy of our building material database, and the accuracy of our prediction model, predicting what the kind of coverage and interference you're going to have. And both of those is really where, our, where we shine. Gotcha. Jason, thank you so much for being here today no and problem. talking with us, and thank you for the article. Yeah, and no problem it was great at all. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Rich. Thanks yeah. for everything.